Hello, Marvelites. Welcome to Marvel's The Pull List for April 18th, 2018. I'm Ryan Panagos, a.k.a. Agent M. And I'm Tucker Marcus. Yeah. Milk Boy. It's the milk episode. You said, like, <laughs> you used ud instead of utter yeah. in one of your tweets, yeah. and that just got me. Yeah, was, this is coming off the devastated. back of a, of a brief t- Twitter exchange, uh, just for some context, where I was just talking about drinking a cow's sweet milk. Some yeah. sweet, sweet, lukewarm, semi-translucent milk. Yep, straight from the uds. <laughs> straight from the uds. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Have you ever been on a farm? Oh, yeah. Really? Oh, yeah. Oh, I'm you... from Farmville. Not, not like, the, not the... Is that a town, Farmville? <laughs> <laughs> like the, I realized that the, the Facebook game. Yeah, that came, that has a different context uh-huh. uh, in the internet age. But yeah, no, I'm from straight, you know, very extremely rural. Every, you know, every street, every road in my town has a big old cow, horse, pig, something, corn, Ooh, something. Cow, farm. horse, pig. Yeah, cow, horse, pig. Nice. <laughs> You're like an onion, Tucker. The oh, more yeah. we go on, the the layers <laughs> we find, and it's it's delightful. <laughs> Uh, and eventually you'll bring someone to tears, just like an <laughs> onion. All right, but we've got a lot of books this week. If you're just joining us on Marvel's The Polis, we're going to talk about all the new comics out, the print issues, the single issues, collections, the digital stuff. It's a lot, and it's awesome. Uh, yeah. First up is Amazing Spider-Man number 799. 799. It is uh, part three of Go Down Swinging. This is the last arc that Dan Slott will write for Amazing Spider-Man. And there's, I think he's doing 801 as well. Yep. Mm-hmm. But so this is the penultimate part of Go Down Swinging. And, man, it's a good one. It's obviously written by Dan Slott, art by Stuart Immonen, inks by Wade Von Grabadger, and colors by Marte Gracia with letters by Joe Caramagna. And I just, I love that, you know, you've got an injured Spidey here. He is injured. He's made a, a pact with the goblin be like, I'm out. I won't spidey up and jump into the fray. Just keep my loved ones safe. And of course, goblins got like his loopholes through it and he's got his plans. Uh, and Spider-Man has his loopholes mm-hmm. and he goes through his plans. So we get a lot of cool cameos, which always makes me happy, you know, and it also really spotlights just how strong a supporting cast that Peter slash Spider-Man has. It's a supporting cast that includes headliners you know it's like miles morales silk human torch anti-venom clash it's good to see those characters show up and represent for spike yeah it felt like a really cool look at you know the generational effect and the legacy of spider-man and what he means and they come to help him when you know he needs it most heck yeah dancing around some spoilers here but Jonah is a big part of why Peter's in the precarious situation that he's in. But there's this these couple of panels that Stewart draws. It's a video chat. Jonah on one side, Peter on the other. And there's this silent panel of Peter's reaction when he hears the news. And it's not just a drawing of someone. It's a drawing of someone seen through a screen on a laptop. And it still conveys so much. And that look of like anger and sadness and disappointment on Peter's face is tremendous. Uh, it's, you know, it's the look, it's the lighting, the tenor of the panel, uh, and super major props to Wade Von Grubadger and Marte Gracia. The inks and the colors there really sell that because it's all the parts are coming together in this story. It's gorgeous stuff, and it's smart storytelling. Big battle, final fight, coming up next issue. I can't wait. I'm obviously dying to know how he wraps things up. Now, I have some theories. I have some theories looking back over this. This is not privileged knowledge or anything. I just have theories just like any fan would, but cannot wait to find out. It's going to be great. Moving on to another Amazing Spider-Man book. This is Amazing Spider-Man Renew Your Vows, number 18. It's written by Jody Hauser with art by Nathan Stockman, colors by Ruth Redman, letters by Joe Caramagna. This is part of the Fast Times at Midtown High story, and um, we spoke about the influences of Peter Parker across herodom uh, with Amazing Spider-Man. And this is a different look at that. It's a different take on the same idea. It's about the Spider family in a very literal way between MJ and Peter and their daughter Annie Mae. Uh, This issue specifically is a great look at the different ways of heroing and the kind of different methods that Annie Mae might employ versus her parents. She has this, you know, evolved way of thinking about it that's something a little different it's not quite the way that peter has done business in the past and there's a great scene in this issue where mj and peter kind of confront anime and say like whoa 
what is going on? What are you doing here? And she kind of lays out her ideas, lays out her plans, and they're like, okay, you know what? We'll step back. We'll keep an eye on you because we don't necessarily, you know, fully endorse this way of doing things, but it is very much in the spirit of Spider-Man and it works really perfectly. I just felt like this is a great look at the evolution, the generational differences in how one can be a superhero in the Spider-Man vein. And there's some great Normie Osborne stuff in here Mm. as well, which I really loved. We got some really, really great stuff in the first few issues of this series about Normie um, when Annie Mae and Normie were still really young. And now that they're teenagers, it's really interesting to go back and see how they've evolved, to see their relationship and how how really interesting that is. Yeah, those little bits of relationship business, not like romantic relationships, just like they have history together. And there's so much weight to that. I love it. So much potential. All right. We had already one penultimate thing that we've talked about mm. with uh, Amazing Spider-Man. We've got another one. This is Avengers 689, penultimate chapter of Avengers No Surrender. Right off the bat, though, I think it's great that they show the the scale and the scope of the catastrophe. And, like, Earth has been spinning out, and we've been looking at the Avengers for the most part and what how they're dealing with it. And now we get to see the rest of the world, and you see all the heroes – coming up in Champions, America Chavez, The Defenders, Moon Girl, Devil Dinosaur, and and so many more. But like seeing the challenger wipe the floor with everyone Mm -hmm. is awesome. Like that's what I want a giant villain to be like, to feel nearly insurmountable, to be something that is such a threat that all the Avengers combined have a hard time or no shot at beating them. Big star of the book for me is Lightning. He gets to play cards against the Grandmaster. Uh, and the Grandmaster, he's like, yo, bro, you got a game. I'm going to play. I'm like that Saw guy, you know, <laughs> Dr. Saw, the star yes. of the movie, the, the yes. Saw series That's of movies. Right. Dr. Yeah. Saw. Dr. Saw. And they, they play for the fate of everything, not just his life, not just Earth, but like all of it. I really hope we get more lightning coming out of this. We don't have as many rad gay Latino Avengers out there. And he steps up. So cool. The back matter is really cool, too. It's two pages from the creator's point of view, their thoughts about the story, and their favorite moments. I don't know. I'm a big sucker for those like little behind-the-scenes extra bits of content, Yeah, and they've been delivering on these. Speaking of interviews, speaking of No Surrender, up on Marvel.com right now is an awesome interview between Alana Smith, who is going to be editing the upcoming Quicksilver No Surrender book. That's spinning out of the previous issue of this series uh, with... The writer, Saladin Ahmed, and it's so awesome to get their individual takes. They're both Quicksilver nuts. Go check it out now. Uh, Very exciting. We also, in Avengers books this week, have Avengers Back to Basics number four, written by Peter David, art by Juan and Ramirez, and it's uh, another one of the cool flashbacky VR stories uh, where the Avengers have to face this this gnarly dude with a cosmic cube. I don't want to say anymore because it's cool and, and I don't want to spoil anything, uh, but it's Comixology exclusive. Check it out there. Don't sleep on these. Comixology books have consistently been really, really good. Always great comics. Next up is Black Panther number 172, it is written by ta Coates with pencils by Leonard Kirk, inks by Mark Deering with Walden Wong, colors by Laura Martin with Matt Mila, and letters by Joe Sabino. Where we left off in the last issue, a new villain popped up, and this issue is all about that new... Listen, I say new villain, yep. new villain for this series. He just came out of seemingly nowhere. Can I jump in real quick? Please. So someone asked us recently who this character was. So this is the adversary. The adversary started out as a sort of Mm X-Men villain in Fall of the Mutants time period. If you don't want any more spoilers, jump ahead. But the adversary is this big, mystical, interdimensional, demonic entity that is pretty much all about chaos and recreating the universe to his own desires and whims. The Cheyenne Native Americans called him the Great Trickster uh, and actually Forge Uh, the X-Man and a member of that tribe, he was trained to battle the adversary. Uh, And they did. They had this amazing battle uh, during Fall of the Mutants. Storm was involved. 